Hello, and welcome to a short animation on hemoglobin and its allosteric effectors, starting with the structure as a whole before looking into the allosteria of the model. The structure of hemoglobin has evolved over millions of years to be extremely efficient at transporting oxygen. The reason for this trait is that oxygen does not readily dissolve in water, therefore it can't effectively get the tissues for respiration. To begin with, we will look at the heme core of each subunit. At the centre of these subunits is an iron 2 plus ion, bound in a porphyrin ring by four nitrogen atoms. This forms the basis of the active site for oxygen bundling. Moving outwards, we can observe the polypeptide chains that make up the two alpha and two beta globin subunits. The alpha subunits consist of helixes covalently bound in the porphyrin ring. Beta subunits consist of beta sheets bound in the same manner. The folding of the protein globin creates a small area in which most molecules cannot fit, heightening the specificity of the molecule for oxygen. Oxygen can then bind reversibly to the exposed ion. The ion is not fully oxidized as it is held covalently within the subunit. The four subunits are joined together by non-covalent bonds, largely salt bridges and hydrogen bonds. In its deoxygenated state, there are more salt bridges resulting in a taut T-state conformation. As oxygen binds, the number of salt bridges decreases, increasing the affinity for oxygen. This is known as the relaxed R state. In peripheral tissues, this is reversed as there is a high carbon dioxide concentration, decreasing the affinity for oxygen, reverting back to the T state. The change in conformation by external chemicals is known as allosteric. Specifically looking at carbon dioxide, the majority of CO2 is transported in the form of bicarbonate ions. This decreases the pH within the blood, thus disrupting the salt bridges within the hemoglobin, causing the oxygen to associate. The second effect of CO2 is the binding of the protein chain itself, forming hard amino hemoglobin, reducing the affinity for oxygen. But only 10% of carbon dioxide is transported. The next allosteric effector is 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate, or 2,3-BPG. This has a higher affinity for deoxyhemoglobin to ensure maximum oxygen dissociation into tissues. It binds reversibly to the very centre of the molecule, allowing dissociation. Due to this property, it is more prominently found at higher altitudes where increased oxygen unloading is required. The third and fourth allosteric effectors are inositol, a common intracellular simulating molecule, and beta fibrin. These are found in areas of low pH and react with phosphate groups within given globin to disrupt the cell bridges. This causes oxygen to be released from the molecule. The final chemical of note is nitric oxide. Although it does not affect hemoglobin directly, it is transported by the molecule to allow vasodilation within the blood vessel. It binds to a cysteine residue within hemoglobin, depending on the conformation of space. At sites where it is needed, nitric oxide can be released, causing vasodilation, thus improving delivery of oxygen to the site. These are the main allosteric effects of hemoglobin. Thank you for listening. We've been awesome.